So let me ask you a question. Did you enjoy HBO's Rome TV series a few years ago? Hmm? Or maybe you like the Spartacus TV series that kind of followed a kind of year or so after. Now the producers of this particular feature obviously loved both of those series because the influence is so heavy on this particular feature. Now I'm talking about 2014's The Lost Legion. Now why do I say feature rather than movie? Well, let me just explain. This is actually a two hour, I guess you'd call it pilot, to then a ten part series. But it has been packaged as a kind of standalone film as well. Although I will say it is actually left kind of open ended. So if you are watching it as a, just a film, please be aware that nothing is really going to get too resolved at the end of this kind of movie. And you will have to kind of watch the, the subsequent series that's coming out after that to really kind of find out exactly what happens. So obviously this is based on uh, you know, Roman times, Roman Empire, and the plot is quite sort of convoluted. And the reason why I say it's influenced by those particular series is that when, when you watch Rome, if you've watched that TV series, it's more about the kind of the political kind of struggles and the manipulations of certain characters to achieve their goals. And that is the majority of this film. The majority of this film is basically centers around three characters, I guess. And it's this, uh, uh, this commander of this particular garrison and his wife, who both have their kind of plans uh, to, to you know, up, the, up their sort of station, basically, with the kind of the Roman Empire. The wife has a kind of son from a previous marriage who has kind of, you know, uh, heritage from the emperor. And basically, she wants him to become emperor, and uh, the husband's got his own ideas. And there's also this kind of manipulations between these uh, kind of two tribes that are sort of in this particular you know, this particular land, basically, and the Swarthy is kind of led by this guy, Tyrannus, and he's, I guess you would say, the sort of protagonist, and he's the kind of the leader of, of one of these uh, sort of tribes who originally wants to kind of uh, ally himself with Rome, and there's, there's, without going into too many spoilers, there's basically lots of kind of backstabbing and manipulations, and, you know, people are imprisoned and sold off to slavery, blah -de blah and it really sort of tells us the, the, the political sort of struggles between these kind of, all these sort of characters. And there's not a massive cast in this, but it, it is quite dense. And the plot is, you can be argued, maybe is a little bit sort of convoluted. But nonetheless, it is quite, sort of, it is quite dense. There's quite a lot of story here. Now, the reason why I say it's also influenced by Spartacus. Now, there are action scenes in this. So I wouldn't call it really an action movie, but there are some kind of action scenes in there. And the way the, the, the action is shot... If you've ever watched a Spartacus TV show, it is, it's very reminiscent of that. Um, loads of slow-mo. If you're not a fan of kind of slow-mo in your action scenes, you may be a little bit put off by this because they really do overuse it to some degree. And, you know, you've got the kind of CGI blood as well. But, nevertheless, there's not a lot of action, but it's relatively well sort of choreographed if you can kind of get over the slow-mo. So, I'm not going to go too much into the plot because it, it is so kind of deep and convoluted. I don't want to sort of just spell it out piece by piece for you. So, you know, go watch it without you know, knowing too much into it, I guess. And suffice to say, I do believe it is influenced by particularly those two kind of TV shows. So, what's it like? Well, let me tell you. I actually think this looks very good. It's obviously a lower budget compared to those two sort of TV series that I've mentioned. But I have to say, I think they do a pretty good job on the look of this. I and mean, it looks professionally made. I mean, the, the actual set design, can't fault it, to be honest. I can't fault the set design uh, for the budget that they've got. I think it looks uh, maybe not quite on par with the rain, but, you know, it's, it's not certainly not bad. The, the costumes, everything, you know, they all look very kind of... Um, you know, authentic, and they, they, but it looks, you are, you buy into the fact that you're watching this kind of, this Roman story, so to speak. Uh, and I had to give it props for having quite a, quite a dense plot. So, the real negatives here, the, the big one is going to be the acting. The acting on, on this film is, not by everyone, but, but by a lot of the cast, it's some of the worst I've ever seen. You and your men will be free. Have the lapidary attend to his wound. When you see me two days hence, upon the first day of the Ides of Jupiter, you will bow to your new emperor. Now, some of the characters, they actually do try and explain away, oh, he's got some grammar problems, but there is some 
pretty bad acting, and not just from this one guy, from a lot of the cast as well. So the acting, unfortunately, is horrible. I, I really don't know why this wasn't sort of caught on a little bit sort of earlier, because it's, it's so bad. Uh, you know, it's just it's so distracting from, from when you're trying to get it. It really does sort of take you out. It does sound like someone is holding a board with like, the lines on there and someone's kind of like looking over and reading it off, basically. I don't know how this kind of got past the, the sort of dailies that are being made, but possibly some of the worst acting I've seen. And if you are, like I said, maybe not criticism as much, if you're looking for an action film, you may be a little bit disappointed because this really isn't uh, an action-based movie or pilot, whatever you want to call it. But there are, you know, there is a reasonable amount of action, but I wouldn't go as far as calling it an action film. However, like I said, if you are looking at the kind of, if you're a fan of Rome and you like that kind of that political intrigue and the kind of the manipulations behind the scenes kind of stuff and people really sort of uh, screwing each other over in more ways than one. There's lots of boobs in this, by the way. Side note, if you're, you know, lots of boobs prominently on display here, uh, really quite gratuitously. Um, you know, you're going you're to enjoy this movie or this sort of TV pilot, whatever you want to call it. I have to say, uh, it, it got a little boring, to be honest, because there's a lot of talking in it, and you're not quite as invested in the characters because, like I said, I mean, one of the reasons it's possibly the acting, but you're not kind of sucked in as much as you would be in those sort of TV series that I've mentioned. But it wasn't that bad, effort. like I said, the visual here, like, I can't really fault it. Um, the action scenes... You know, pretty decent. The, uh, kind of the I guess the, the, the main protagonist guy, again, not the greatest actor, but you know, quite a likable guy. Um, I, I may watch the rest of this kind of the rest of this series. Who knows? I didn't quite. I didn't. It didn't grip me quite as such as um, like the Rome or Spartacus or even more modern stuff like Vikings. But nevertheless, it wasn't bad. I only give this a five point five out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.